Vicky has as many brothers as sisters, but each of her brothers has only half as many brothers as sisters. How many brothers and sisters are there in Vicky's family? The correct answer is four sisters and three brothers. The key to solving this is to keep it simple. Just count the sisters and brothers in total and in terms of their own number of siblings. Vicky is a music teacher. One day, she came over to her student's house to give him a lesson. The door was unlocked, so Vicky got in. Her student, Mr. Green, was lying on the couch with the flu. He was very weak, and Vicky decided to call the three best doctors in this town. Since Mr. Green was really rich and influential, many people wanted to get rid of him. That's why his bodyguards had to search the doctors before they began any treatment. It turned out that one of the doctors was a criminal. Can you tell which one? This guy. Why does he need an axe? Mr. Green got well and returned to his business duties. He runs a small company producing expensive diamond rings. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, he got a call from his bank. Mr. Green found out that someone had stolen all the money he had. He suspected that it might have been one of his employees, so he asked each of them what they'd been doing that day. Helen, the jeweler, said she always made two rings a day and showed all the rings she had made that week. Jesse, the sales manager, said that he had been busy meeting with the clients. And Amber, the cleaner, said that she'd been cleaning the office every day as usual, and she didn't notice anything suspicious. Who lied? Helen, there are five working days in a regular week. She said she made two rings a day, but she only showed eight rings. It means she missed one day of work. Vicky was walking down a shopping mall. Suddenly, she heard screams, looking outside the window and saw two women in big trouble. Can you tell who has more chances to survive? Look at this lady's hand. It's made of metal. She's a robot, so she'll more likely survive this adventure. One morning, Vicky was walking in the park and noticed this missing cat poster. Can you help her find the cat in this area? It's hiding in this old lady's bag. Vicky explained to the old lady that the cat had been missing, but the old lady refused to give the cat away so easily. First of all, Vicky had to solve her riddle. I can whistle, I can howl, I can scream, and I can whisper, but I don't speak. What am I? Can you help Vicky? The correct answer is wind. After getting the cat, Vicky headed to its owner's home. She walked through this beautiful park. Can you spot what's wrong here? This bench doesn't have legs. It's literally flying in the air. Vicky brought the cat to its owner, Diana. She was very glad to get her pet back and invited Vicky for dinner. Vicky was very hungry and agreed. Diana served these four dishes with various foods, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you tell which one? The coconut cake is sprinkled with some human nails. If you look closely at this tomato soup, you'll notice some metal nails. 
Something's moving inside this burger. So this pasta is the only edible dish here. After dinner, Diana made a confession. She was a real witch, but Vicky didn't believe in magic at all. That's why Diana offered her this deal. If you solve my riddle, I'm gonna use some magic to fulfill your biggest wish. I'm beautiful, up in the sky, I'm magical, yet I cannot fly. To some people, I bring luck. To some people, wealth. What am I? Can you help Vicky out? The correct answer is rainbow. Vicky has always wanted to become a famous singer. She received an invitation to a singing contest. Vicky sang beautifully and won first place. After the performance, she drank a glass of water backstage. After that, Vicky felt very sick. The contest manager called the ambulance. Doctors said that someone had poisoned Vicky. The police questioned three suspects and searched their bags. Lily said, I was crying in the dressing room. This contest meant so much to me. Jessica said, Who do you think I am? Singers should stand for each other. And Rose said, I was outside the music hall with Lily. She was crying because she had lost this competition. Who poisoned Vicky? Lily said she was in the dressing room, while Rose said that they had been outdoors. Therefore, one or two of them are liars. But only Rose carries toothpaste but no toothbrush in her bag. That's pretty suspicious. When Vicky got better, she checked her mailbox and saw three messages from different music producers. Tom offered her a tour in Europe. Ryan offered Vicky to work on her first album at his record company in New York. And Joanna sent this invitation to participate in a TV show. But only one of these offers is real. Can you help Vicky make the right choice? Joanna's message is spam. She doesn't mention Vicky's name anywhere, and the text includes a suspicious link. Ryan sent Vicky a picture of his record company. But there are palm trees and a tropical forest outside the window. It's clearly not in New York. So, Vicky should pick Tom. Vicky was walking home from a rehearsal and stepped on a magical portal. She fainted and woke up in an enchanted forest. Suddenly, a wicked witch popped out of nowhere and gave Vicky a choice. If you solve my riddle, I'll let you go. And if not, you'll get lost in this forest forever. Here's the riddle. I can be flipped and broken, but I never move. I can be closed and opened and sometimes removed. You can seal me with your hands. What am I? Unfortunately, Vicky failed to crack this riddle. And what about you? The correct answer is a deal. The wicked witch left Vicky alone in the forest. Vicky searched the area and found three paths leading to the nearest village. The first path goes through hungry wolves. Giant mutant plants are waiting in the second path. They eat all mammals, including human beings. And the third path is covered with a bunch of bugs and worms. Which way should Vicky go? Although insects are gross, they are the least harmful to humans. So Vicky should choose this path. <sighs> Vicky got very hungry and decided to find some food in the village. When she came closer, she realized the gates were locked. Can you help her guess the right code? Take a look at the screen. It requires a four-digit code. Someone decorated the gates with this symbol. It's a hint. 
If we divide this symbol into four parts, we will see that it's made up of four twos. So, Vicky should enter two, 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 two and come in. When Vicky entered the village, an angry pixie stopped her and said, Not so fast, lady. You gotta solve one riddle first. What should you do when you see a green man? Vicky cracked this puzzle right away. What about you? You should cross the road. Vicky solved it so easily because she was standing next to a traffic light. It turned out it wasn't an ordinary village. Various magical creatures lived here together. Vicky entered the local club and asked for some food. But the owner, Werewolf Fred, said, If you want to eat, you gotta work. Now Vicky's job is to check the guests' ID cards. She shouldn't let suspicious persons or those under 21 get inside. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who shouldn't enter the club. The first one, Vampire, is already 21, and nothing looks suspicious in his ID, so Vicky should let him in. And this werewolf lady seems alright too. This elf's ID card says he was born on September 31st, but such a date doesn't exist. Therefore, Vicky shouldn't let the elf in. After work, Vicky went to the local supermarket to buy some food. She saw two attractive young ladies eating street food there. Can you tell which one of them isn't human? Take a closer look at this ice cream. Raw meat? This lady is definitely a werewolf. Vicky liked this village and decided to stay there. She met the love of her life, and two years later, they got engaged. Today is her wedding day. Can you guess who her husband is? It's the third guy. He's wearing a tie, which means he attended the wedding. And he's wearing a ring, too. Holly went to the supermarket to buy a watermelon. She found these four watermelons, but only uh -oh. one of them is edible. Can you guess which one? The first watermelon is a hologram. See those flashing pixels? The tail of the second watermelon is a green snake, probably not the safest choice. And the fourth watermelon has little cracks, so Holly should choose the third watermelon. One dark, cold night, Harry and Pam were chilling together in their country house. Harry was watching a movie while his wife Pam enjoyed her favorite mystery book. Suddenly, all electricity went out. Harry decided to go to bed, but Pam decided to finish the book. There was no artificial light around, but this fact didn't stop Pam. How is that possible? Pam was listening to an audiobook on her phone. It's big on Saturday and Sunday. It's small on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's absent on Monday and Friday. What are we talking about? It's the letter S. Bella and Ken took a flight to Europe to celebrate their honeymoon. It took them two and a half hours to reach the destination. After spending two weeks together, they flew back home. However, it took 150 minutes this time, even though the plane flew at the same speed. Can you guess why? Turns out that two and a half hours are exactly 150 minutes. Karen went camping in a jungle with her three best friends. Yay! They had a wonderful dinner and went to sleep. In the morning, 
Karen woke up first and found out that someone had eaten all the food from the bag. She questioned her friends. Josh said, I was very tired and fell asleep as soon as my head touched the pillow. I don't know what happened. Leah said, I left the tent in the middle of the night to go to the toilet. The food was in the bag near the tree where we left it. Wendy said, I left the tent at night and spent some time stargazing. I ate just one chocolate, I swear. Who ate the food? It was the monkey who was hiding in the tree. See those footprints around the bag? They are definitely not human. Gerald is a college dean. Somebody stole his car this morning. Soon the police found it across the street. The thief hit a pole and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Holly said, I was busy having classes all morning. Then I went for a walk with my friends. Brian said, I was checking the test papers. Rob said, I skipped classes and spent the day at my girlfriend's studio. Can you guess who stole the car? It was Holly. Take a closer look inside the car. She lost one of her earrings. The combined age of Jenny and Jasmine is 49 years old. Jenny is twice as old as Jasmine was when Jenny was as old as Jasmine is now. How old are the sisters? Jenny is 28 and Jasmine is 21. Lisa likes grapes, but not potatoes. She likes squash, but not lettuce. Also, she likes peas, but not onions. Following the same rule, will she like pumpkins or apples? Pumpkins. Because Lisa only prefers things that grow on vines. Which of the following words don't belong to this group and why? Courts. All the other words are anagrams of each other. Two people participated in a contest. They had to hold something. Finally, the jury announced the winner. It was a person with their hands and feet tied. How can this be possible? It's all simple. The contestants had to hold their breath. And the tied person managed to hold it the longest. Becky is thinking about a seven-letter word that we read very often. Letters 5, 6, and 7 grow every year. Letters 3 and 4 are the same. Letters 3, 2, and 5 cover over 70% of the world. What word is Becky thinking of? The correct answer is message. Our age grows every year, and the C covers over 70% of the planet. Amy is looking at Nick, and Nick is looking at Mia. Amy is married, and Mia is not. Is a married person looking at the unmarried person? Will you go with a yes or a no? Or is this information insufficient? The correct answer is yes. Two combinations are possible here. If Nick is married, Mia, who is unmarried, is looking at him, who is married. If Nick is unmarried, we still have Amy, who is married. In this case, she's looking at Nick, who is single, which meets the requirements too. Five friends were eating apples. Amy finished before Bob, but after Cat. Dan finished before Eve, but after Bob. Can you figure out the exact order in which they finished the apples? Cat, Amy, Bob, Dan, and Eve. Eric's job is to guard a supermarket parking lot. 
One day, he was walking around the area as usual and noticed that someone had parked the car in the middle of the driveway. He questioned four women. Ladies, who is the owner of this car? All four women replied, it's not my car. Eric took a closer look at the vehicle and figured out its owner right away. Can you guess which of these women is the owner of the car? It's the first lady. She's the only person who's not wearing a bag. Her bag is in the car. Peter came home in the evening and found his car wrecked. His three roommates were there. Peter decided to find out who was guilty, so he questioned them. Josh replied, I didn't touch your car. I was walking the dog. Mike said, that wasn't me. I was playing football with my friend. And Will said, "Mm, nothing special happened today. I was just hanging out with our neighbors. Can you spot the liar? It's Will. He said he visited the neighbors, but nobody lives in this abandoned house. Plus, his cheek looks like he was in a crash. Sophie was sleeping. Suddenly, a robber broke into her apartment. He locked Sophie in the bathroom and asked her to stay quiet. Then, the robber began to collect cash and jewelry around the apartment. Suddenly, the phone started ringing. The robber told Sophie to pick up and talk without giving away the situation. Sophie picked up the phone. It was her husband. She said, Oh, hi, darling. Is it an emergency, darling? Give me a call when you land. I'll cook your favorite meal that will help you relax after your business trip. Then she hung up. Ten minutes later, the police arrived at Sophie's house and caught the robber. Can you guess how the police learned about the robbery? Sophie played with the mute buttons. She pressed mute on specific parts of her conversation to make her husband only hear emergency, call, and help. And he called the police right away. Rick woke up in a weird basement and saw three doors. He has only one chance to escape. If he enters one of the doors, he won't be able to use them again. The first door leads to a room with high-voltage wires hanging above the wet floor. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with water and piranhas swimming in it. The third door leads to a space where flesh-melting acid rain is falling from the ceiling. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Rick should choose the first door. He'll be okay if he won't let his body come in contact with the wires and the wet floor at the same time. Jerry called his wife Robin and told her that he would be home by 7 o'clock. They didn't plan anything special for that evening, but when he arrived at 2 minutes past 7, Robin was furious. Why was she so angry? Any ideas? She thought her husband would come home after work by 7 p.m., but he appeared by 7.02 a.m. the next morning. When the day after tomorrow is yesterday, today will be as far from Wednesday as today was from Wednesday when the day before yesterday was tomorrow. What is the day after this day? Can you guess? It's Thursday. Harry and Barry are two magicians performing this evening in two nightclubs on the same street. But one of them is fake. Can you guess who? It's Barry. Take a closer look under the magician's tuxedo. On the right, you can see a restaurant employee badge with his name on it. He must be a waiter who came instead of the real magician. A monkey, a squirrel, and a bird are racing to the top of a coconut tree. Who will get the banana first, the monkey, the squirrel, or the bird?
None of them, because bananas don't grow on coconut trees. Bonnie is cooking dinner. She has three stoves, a gas stove, a wood stove, and a coal stove. But only one match. What should she light first of all? The match! You are a bus driver. Nine people get on the bus, and three people get on. Then, two more people get on, and another one gets off. Finally, four more people get on, and two get off again. How old is the bus driver? Whatever your age is, remember the question? You're the driver. Like every morning, Daphne went to her favorite local cafe to get her coffee and breakfast sandwich. She left the cafe after she'd paid. A few minutes later, she returned, looking anxious, because she had forgotten her wallet. Strangely, it was nowhere to be found. She called the police to report the incident. Nobody had left the store, so the thief was still there when the officer arrived. He started questioning everyone. Jenny, the cashier, said that Daphne was a regular customer and she had known her for a long time. So, she would never steal her wallet and she didn't see it after Daphne had paid. Andre was a tourist visiting the city for the first time. He said he'd come to the cafe because he'd wanted to try their famous muffins. She claimed he hadn't seen the wallet. He was busy trying to pick what type of muffin he should get at the time. And Harry worked as a store clerk. He said that he'd come there to grab a coffee. And he didn't see the wallet because he was pouring milk into his coffee. So who do you think stole the wallet? It was Harry, the store clerk. Or should I say Harold? Do you see his name tag? He lied about his name when he ordered his drink. Also, even though he said he was pouring milk in his coffee, as you can see, it doesn't have any milk in it. Jessica was an aspiring actor, and she had a big musical theater audition that day. She left her house early in the morning to make it on time, but she had forgotten to take her sheet music with her, so she had to drive back. When she walked in, though, she saw her roommate lying on the floor unconscious. A nurse was standing beside her. She explained to Jessica that her roommate had been poisoned, but luckily, she'd had enough time to call an ambulance before she passed out. Jessica immediately realized something was wrong. She thanked the nurse for helping her friend and asked her if she could get her a glass of water or anything else. The nurse agreed, and Jessica hurried to the kitchen. There, she called the police saying, There's a fake nurse in my house. She poisoned my roommate and tried to rob her. How did Jessica understand that? When she arrived at the house, there was no ambulance car in the driveway or in the street. And it's not like paramedics started using Uber. And you might have also noticed that the paramedic bag the nurse was holding was slightly open, and Jessica's roommate's jewelry was dangling out of it. Anna and Catherine are both influencers, but take a look at the latest photos they posted. Which of these ladies do you think is richer? Catherine is richer, of course. Just look at the number of likes on her photo. She has 27,907 likes. Anna, on the other hand, has 9,837, which means that Catherine has way more followers and must be earning millions. Annie managed to buy presents for everyone except her dad. She knew what everyone wanted, but her dad was kind of secretive and not the talking type. He was also not great with technology and never bought anything online, so there was no way she could sneak into her dad's computer and check the saved items in his shopping cart. But he always liked to make lists in his little notebook, and Annie was sure she might be able to find a wish list there. So she sneaked into her father's office one day to look for the notebook. It was nowhere to be found, but his study table had a locked drawer. Uh -oh. She looked for the key around the room but couldn't find it anywhere. That's when two different sticky notes attached to two different books inside the bookcase caught her eye. The first note was attached to a psychology book and had P5487TH written on it. 
The second note was attached to a detective novel and said P21320TH. Annie immediately knew what the notes meant. Can you guess what she had to do? She had to open to page 548 in the first book and find the seventh word on this page. Then, she had to open page 213 in the second book and find the twentieth word on that page. The words she found were under and desk. The girl immediately looked under the desk and found the drawer key taped to it. James was walking back to his apartment from work late at night. Suddenly, he was hit on the head and taken away. When he woke up, he found himself in a small room. He tried to escape, but the door was locked with a padlock. James tried to look for the key, but there was nothing in there but a window with strange-looking metal bars. Suddenly, he noticed something. It helped him to find the key. Do you see it too? One of the metal bars is different from the others. That one is the key. Giselle was camping in the forest during a night when the moon was full. After midnight when she was making s'mores by a fire, she heard a loud howl. There was a werewolf in the uh -oh. forest and it managed to find Giselle's tent because it smelled of food there. Thankfully, Giselle was not in her tent anymore when the werewolf arrived because she had already run away. Hiding behind a tree, she watched the creature eat her s'mores and tear up the tent. When the werewolf left before sunrise, the girl returned to her tent, but everything was ruined. There was no more food or water left. Her cell phone had run out of battery, so she couldn't call anyone. She started wandering through the forest and soon she came upon a witch's house. When she walked in, she saw the witch and another lady. Giselle asked the witch if she could send her home. The witch agreed to help her on one condition. She would only send Giselle home if she guessed her sister's name. If not, she would turn her into a frog. Giselle knew the answer, but how? Did you notice that the witch's sister is wearing the same necklace around her neck as the werewolf? Well, Giselle did, and there's a name written on the necklace. Abigail. Zoe went to a security guard and reported that her gym bag was missing. She said she'd gone to the ladies' restroom after her dance cardio class. She was fixing her hair when someone came up from behind and pushed her. So, she didn't see the person who had taken her bag. The security guard refused to check the footage from the security camera that was outside the restroom. Neither did he file a report. Why? Zoe said she was fixing her hair, so she must have been looking in the mirror. If she was telling the truth about someone sneaking up from behind, she would have definitely seen their reflection. So, Zoe probably lied so that she could sue them. Luckily, the security guard was super smart. Several women went missing in a small town. James Darcy and his police team had been searching for months, but they couldn't find the place where the women were kept. One day, when Sandra was jogging, she decided to use another route to get home. As she was passing an old cabin, she heard screams coming from its basement. She immediately called James Darcy to report it. James and his team arrived at the place and busted in. They found there three women. They all said that they had been locked in the basement for months, but James knew one of them was lying. The first woman said that her name was Tammy and that she had spent almost eight months in the basement. The second woman claimed that her name was Hannah and that she had been there for almost five months. The third woman told him that her name was Allison and that she had stayed there for about three months. Can you tell who the liar is? Allison is telling the truth. Look at her. Her clothes are dirty. Her hair is greasy. Her roots have started to grow out. She definitely hasn't seen daylight for a long time. The same goes for Hannah. But look at Tammy. She looks clean. Her clothes look new. Her hair and makeup look fresh. So it must be her who is lying. 
David spent his summer break at a science camp that was at a big space facility. When the summer break ended and school started, he told his friends from the science club all about his camp adventures. He said that at the facility, he had found a secret room. And in there, there was a time machine. He stepped into it and pressed some buttons to test if it really worked, and it did. He traveled through time and was able to talk to Nikola Tesla, Chuck Berry, and King Aragorn. But one of his friends immediately called him out for lying. How did he know that David made up this whole thing? Well, even if David actually managed to travel through time, he might have been able to talk to Nikola Tesla and Chuck Berry, but definitely not King Aragorn, because he is a fictional character. Three friends, Ashton, Emma, and Lewis, went skydiving together. This is them right before they jumped out of the plane. Which of them is in danger? Ashton. He's wearing a regular backpack instead of his parachute. Amelia is running away from a group of zombies and comes across three doors. Behind the first one, there's a raging fire. Behind the second door, there's a deep lake. Behind the third door, there are venomous bees that bite everyone who enters. Which way is the safest? I'd choose the second door and then just swim away. It's just a lake. Amelia can probably do it. Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. It was late evening when she finally found a witch's house and asked the woman to help her get home. The witch recently got internet access and was shopping online, but there were lots of fake items on the internet and she needed to buy only original products. Unfortunately, she didn't know the correct logos, so she needed Esme's help. First of all, she wanted an iPhone. Which iPhone logo is the original one? Of course, this one. Next, she needed a pair of sneakers for her morning runs. Which logo is correct? Here it is. Next, she wanted to get a fancy purse. Which Chanel logo is correct? This one. The witch also wanted a BMW motorbike. But which one is the original logo? Yep, that's right. When the witch needs gas for her motorbike, what 7-Eleven should she go to? It's this one. Amazing! Now Esme can go back home. Evelyn went to a corporate party with her husband. At the party, she suddenly blacked out. When Evelyn woke up in a hospital, she couldn't remember anything. There were two men in front of her, and each of them claimed to be her husband. But which one tells the truth? Since Evelyn and her husband were at a corporate event, they were both dressed accordingly. The guy in a hoodie doesn't look formal enough, so her husband must be the one who's wearing a suit. Miss Lodge was going on a vacation. She cleaned up her office and left, taking the key with her. When she came back two weeks later, she immediately realized that someone had been to her office while she'd been away. How did she understand it? When she left, the window blinds were closed, and now they're open. A group of friends met in the evening for a game night. According to the rules of one of the games they played, they each had to draw a card with a number. Soon, they realized that the number 6 was missing. Since it was a new set of cards, it was weird that they had already lost it. They all revealed their cards and, indeed, there was no 6. Suddenly, one of the friends started to laugh. She said she'd found the missing card. 
Can you spot it too? The player who has a 9 actually has a 6, but he's holding it upside down. There are only 8 cards and the highest number is also 8. It was reported that another civilian had invaded Earth. Detective Callum had a special mission to find everyone who was not human. He entered a cafe searching for invaders and noticed one of them right away. Can you tell which customer is not human? It's that dark-haired guy right there. Look, he has six fingers. Take a look at this busy street. Can you find an imposter here? It's this guy. His clothes are super warm. But look, his face is blue. Now we're moving to the mall. Try to find an intruder here. Look, this woman is glimmering. She must be from another world. We have a few more intruders to catch. Detective Callum found out that one of them was at a local college, so he drove there. Which student is not human? Look, that girl is floating, just a couple of inches above the ground, but still, definitely not an ordinary student. After work, the detective went to the gym. But even there, there was someone from another planet. Can you spot them? Pay attention to the guy on the treadmill. He's running too fast. He must be an imposter. Arya called the police and reported that her friend Violet had been poisoned. The girl found her unconscious on the floor. Here's what Arya said. I was walking past Violet's house and noticed that the lights were on. I figured that she was at home, so I decided to come in and say hi. The front door was open, so I walked in and saw Violet just like that. The police officer asked her if she had touched anything. Arya answered that she had only touched Violet to check her pulse, and then her cell phone to make the call. The police detained her for further investigation. Why? The lights in the room are off. But Arya said that it hadn't been dark in the room. That's why she entered. If she didn't touch the switch, then she's lying now. It was a sunny spring Sunday morning. The whole family was at home. When Hannah returned to her room after breakfast, she noticed that someone had played a prank on her and stolen all the clothes from her closet. She questioned every person in the house. Hannah's mom said she'd been busy reorganizing her bedroom. Her dad said that he'd been shoveling snow in front of the house. The girl's sister, Serenity, said that she had been playing video games in her room. Who took Hannah's clothes? It was her dad. There is no snow outside. It's spring. He couldn't have been shoveling snow. So he lied. Tyler came back home and found a love letter in his mailbox. It was a very sweet one, but the sender didn't write their name. Instead, there was some code added at the end. Can you figure out the name of Tyler's secret admirer? The alphabet is the key. D plus 1 means the letter following D, which is E. O minus 3 means three letters before O, which is L. Two letters after G is I. Z plus 0 is actually Z. And C minus 2 is A. It seems that the girl's name is Eliza. Kara likes traveling, but she's terrible at packing. So, your task is to check her suitcase and find one thing she doesn't need to take with her. Kara is going camping with her friends. What's that extra thing she packed that she needs to leave at home? There's no electricity in the forest. She can leave this electric kettle at home. This time, Kara is packing for her vacation in Mexico. She and her boyfriend have booked a room in a beautiful hotel. 
right by the ocean. What won't she need there? She probably won't need the towel. Hotels usually provide them and replace them every day with clean ones. This time, Kara is going on a ski trip with a group of friends. The task is the same. What won't she need there? I'm not sure about their plans, but she isn't likely to need this swimsuit. And finally, Kara is going to visit her grandparents. They live on a farm, and she'll stay there for a week. There's no electricity or running water there, so it's gonna be a bit tough for a girl from a big city. What doesn't she need to take with her? I think it's this hairdryer. No electricity, remember? Weston Jones, a young businessman, was found poisoned in his office. Detective Callum arrived to investigate the case. He had three suspects, Mr. Jones' cousin, Leah Jones, his business partner, Kenneth Brown, and his girlfriend, Emery. Leah said that she hadn't seen Weston for a while. Kenneth said they'd had an argument, but he hadn't poisoned his partner. And Emery said she loved Weston and would never have done anything like that. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Look, there's a lipstick stain on one of the teacups in Mr. Jones's office. The color matches Leah's lipstick, but she said that she hadn't seen her cousin lately. She must be lying. Ariana was poisoned, and Detective Callum was on the case. One of the main suspects was Jake, Ariana's sister's boyfriend. Someone saw them together, and Detective Callum visited him. Good afternoon. I'm sorry to tell you this, but your girlfriend's sister, Ariana, has been poisoned. Do you know anything about it? And do you maybe have any photos with her? Jake said. Oh, poor Ari. I've never met her, but my girlfriend loves her very much. Yes, I have a picture of their family. The detective looked at the photo and arrested Jake. Why? Look, Jake is in the photo too. It means that he must have met Ariana. Then why would he lie about it? Esme was walking through the forest, yep, again. And you know what? She got lost. She had been wandering around until she found the witch's house. She said, hi, petted the cat, and asked the witch to show her the way home. The witch had a task for Esme. She needed several magical artifacts for her new spell, but she only knew their shapes. And Esme had to figure out which of the artifacts the witch needed. Here's the first set. Those are magical crystals. Which of them is the one the witch needs? Here it is. Okay, here are several plants. Can you spot the one the witch needs? Yes, here it is. Now there are several types of insects. Which one of them is the one the witch needs? Perfect. Here it is. And the last crystal. What's your guess? It's right there. Esme's free to go this time. Thank you for your assistance. A high-speed express train is leaving in 15 minutes. Security guards are scanning everyone's bags and find one of these three bags very suspicious. Can you guess which one? It's the second luggage. This lady has a heavy book among her things, and the title, Dictionary, has the wrong spelling. Maybe it's just a cover to hide something suspicious? The train departs. Unfortunately, this area is full of rocks, so the road is winding a lot. Only one of these routes will lead the train to the final destination. Can you guess which one?
only the third route is correct. Susan is a first-class passenger. She orders a cup of tea. The waiter brings her what she asked for. Suddenly, Susan sees a fly in her cup and gets terrified. The waiter takes her cup and goes to the kitchen. Then, he returns with a fresh cup of tea. But Susan yells, You brought me the same cup of tea! Gross! How did she know? Susan already had added sugar. The tea was sweet when the waiter brought it back. Susan gets bored and takes a walk around the train. She enters a rail car with three passengers only, Xavier, Gerald, and Peter. One of them can't wait to meet his two daughters when the train arrives at the final destination. He promised to take them to the beach. Can you tell which guy it is? It's Gerald. He has three bucket hats on top of his suitcase. These two cute bucket hats still have price tags, so he probably bought them for his daughters as a gift. The train has arrived. Gerald rents a car to go to the mansion in the forest where his family lives. Unfortunately, the road is surrounded by multiple possessed wild animals. Suddenly, a black cat jumps on the windshield and Gerald crashes into a tree. He has to leave the car and walk to the mansion on his feet. Soon, Gerald finds himself at a crossroad. Can you guess which route is more or less safe? A, B, or C? All three routes have animal footprints. The bushes on the first route are moving even though it's not windy. This means that some animals are hiding behind them. And there's a pair of eyes shining in the dark on the third route. So Gerald will have to move quickly through the second route. It begins to rain heavily. Gerald finds a fancy mansion along the way. The owner invites him inside the house to hide from the rain and grab some snacks. Gerald agrees and finds himself at a glamorous party. There are three models eating in the buffet. One of them is broke. Can you guess who? The second lady. Take a look at her bag. She hides some food for later. Gerald walks around the mansion and sees two roommates. One of them is a thief. Can you guess who? It's not the first maid. There's an open safe with diamonds and cash in front of her, but she doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, the second lady has already hidden a diamond in her bucket, so she's the thief. Gerald eats a snack and falls asleep. He wakes up in an old basement. The mansion owner locked him up. Gerald finds a sheet of paper on the floor. It says, I'll give you a chance to get out of here. The key to the door is inside this closed bag. Try to get it. Gerald tries to rip up the bag, but the fabric is too tough. He tries to tear it using his teeth, but he almost breaks a tooth. How can Gerald get the key? He should break a jar and use a fragment of glass to cut the bag and get the key. Gerald opens the door and enters a storage room. There are three doors leading to freedom. A forest full of hungry predatory animals is hiding behind the first door. The second route is filled with toxic gas that's impossible to stand for even a second. And there's a fire behind the third door. Which way is more or less safe? Gerald should choose the third door. There are bottles of water in the room, and the fire is rather small. Gerald can easily put it out. Finally, Gerald is outdoors. But there are three hidden dangers in this garden. Can you find them?
there's a crocodile in these rose bushes, a laser beam alarm system is on, and a scorpion is hiding in a tree. Gerald runs away through the forest, but something's wrong with this place. Can you spot three odd details? Take a look at this spruce. Lemons don't grow on this type of tree. This beehive is inhabited by butterflies. Also, there are two moons in the sky. Gerald checks into the local motel to get some rest. He leaves his golden watch on the bed and goes to buy some coffee. In an hour, he returns to the room and sees that someone had stolen the watch. Gerald interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I only entered your room once today to clean it before check-in. I have a master key, but it's always with me in my pocket. The woodworker says, I entered your room an hour ago to fix a creaky bed. Everything's fine now. And Gerald's neighbor says, I was feeling sick, that's why I went to bed earlier, so I didn't hear anything weird. Who stole Gerald's watch? Nobody. The golden watch fell under the bed. See? The next morning, Gerald goes to the motel's lobby to check out. He finds the manager, Lauren, lying unconscious on the floor. Gerald calls the police. They figure out that someone has put Lauren to sleep using an unknown substance and took all the cash. The police officer questioned three people who last saw Lauren conscious and healthy. Rose, Violet, and Lily. After checking out the crime scene, the officer arrests one of the witnesses. Can you guess who and why? Lily, take a look at her hair extensions. They're not distributed evenly. That's because Lauren pulled out one strand and squeezed it in her fist. She wanted to leave a clue leading to the criminal. Gerald has just come back from his long trip. He's trying to open a suitcase, but realizes that he has forgotten the four-number code. Luckily, Gerald left a note that can help him remember the code. Can you figure out the code? That would be too easy to use the given numbers as they are. To crack this mystery, we should mind the numbers of letters in each given number. So, the correct code is 5364. Finally, Gerald can keep his promise and takes his daughters to the beach. He also takes some food for a picnic. Can you guess the name of this food by emojis? Sandwich. Gerald and his wife Anna have a lot in common. Daughters, careers, and a big house. They do everything together. One day, Anna comes home really late. She's tired, but happy. Gerald gets jealous and yells at her. Anna flames out too. I was working all evening. Gerald says, Sorry, Anna, I don't believe you. It looks like you're dating someone else. Anna refuses to talk and goes to bed alone. Meanwhile, Gerald waits for Anna to fall asleep and checks her purse. He finds nail polish, a wallet, a pack of gum, lipstick, and some keys. Now Gerald is completely sure Anna was seeing someone else. How did he know? The keys are definitely not from their house. The next morning, Gerald receives an email from his boss. Can you guess the meaning of this message? It means, great job, you got it. This type of code is called a Caesar box because Julius Caesar was known as the first one to write codes this way. To decipher the message, simply divide the code into four groups of four then rearrange them vertically. Hey, 
Ready for some Valentine's Day riddles? Look at these three guys. Which of them is going on a date tonight? Hello. It must be this one. He has a little wrapped present, probably for his date. Aww. Now let's peek inside a restaurant. Which of the three girls is on a date? 